I'll tell you something about soldering is that it's really fun because you know you're like that far from finishing. <laughs> So here we are, we're soldering up the snug harbor window and we're making sure, just like we show in our videos, that if you have a T, then your solder joint should look like a T. If you have a Y, your solder joint should look like a Y. It just looks so much better when you do that. Even like right, even right here on the side where you have two different lead profiles. We want to make sure that this looks like a T. Just like that. And we don't want to build the lead, the solder up so high on the on the outside of the lead because this is where our trim's going. So we have like a about a three-quarter inch trim that goes around this. So if you notice, I've got the temperature of my iron just perfect for working with this lead because I can take it, and I like to use my touch and go method when I'm doing lead as well. I like to get some solder down there, one, two, pick straight up. Here we go again, solder, one, two, pick straight up. Look at that joint, I mean, that's like, it's exactly how it's supposed to be. You, Cause you go straight down, pick straight up, and on this, we have kind of like a T. So this, we're gonna do the same thing, except in the open. Here we go, ready? Solder, one, two. But I want you to look at my tip after I clean it. See that pretty gold color? That tells me that this is, this is the right temperature that I have dialed in on my soldering iron control. So when you, when you get it just right, you don't have to worry about things such as your lead melting, things, you know, you're not gonna have to worry about all of that. So what we wanna do is make sure that we get that just right. But I do use Ruby Flux, and you can see it's a beautiful red color because this is a clear jug. But I like my Ruby Flux, and I stand by it, and I, I still do my one, oh. two, pick straight up. Now remember when we went up into the, when we went into the dock here, we changed to 3 16 lead. So we left a 732nd lead that's running horizontally across the water here. And we have a lot of, you know, like this is a miter here. This really needs to give it a little bit of solder and we're just gonna drag it to the left. But you see that Y right there? That's exactly what it's supposed to look like. This is a T, y'all. One, two, straight up. Here we go, ready? Here we go. Soldering lead, one, two. Get the temperature right, everybody, and you can just mosey right on. Hi, everybody, it's Ed here, and we today are working on the Snug Harbor copper foil section of the window. So we have a lot of things going on. We've copper foiled this. I've taken the time, and this is just some 4 aught steel wool. And because, you know, I've been soldering all this and everything, and then covering it up at night, but I wanted to steel wool the copper foil and just get any oxidation off of where I'm gonna solder first. Now, because it, we're soldering, we're using our Ruby Flux, and we're all, I'm just, I just have it in just a little tiny container. This is a little stainless steel container. So we're talking about the touch and go soldering method, and we're just one, two, one, two, one, two. We're gonna straighten this up because we did the touch and go on it, and now we just want to straighten it up. Pull slow. Boom. Okay. Same way here. As you probably notice in the video, I'm using 50-50 solder, but the reason I'm doing that is because I don't want the finished Snug Harbor to be darker than the polished lead. Now, when I polish the lead, it's gonna be a very, a dark pewter color, but it's not gonna be black. And I would prefer to have the Snug Harbor match that. So instead of using 60-40, I'm using 50-50. But the other thing is, I'm still gonna clean it with my baking soda and everything, 
but it's just the patina just isn't going to be as dark because there's not as much tin in the 50-50 as there is in the 60-40. So as long as you give the solder time to melt behind the iron, you can pull it like this. And you just keep tap, what I call tap feeding. And if you get moving too fast, your solder will tell you. And then like I said, <clears throat> I'm using 50-50. You can see it right there in the lens. Again, that's because I want it to look a certain way when it's finished. And that's the way that I need to do it in order to make it, you know, look that way. So even though my table tilts, this window is small enough for me to pick up and flip it over. And if you notice, there's a lot of horizontal lines in here, but this thing didn't flex at all. It's because of the construction and how we did it. These long pieces of lead running horizontally here are helping everything, along with the, the way the lead is run through the water, through the sky. It all adds to the structural integrity of the window. So we're going to solder this side up and next we're going to be putty in this window, get it finished and we're going to get it put in the window here in the shop. Hey everybody, Ed here. We just covered up the snug harbor copper foil section of the window here because we're gonna we're gonna get ready to start puttying this as soon as we clean this side we're gonna pull the tape off and we're gonna use our black patina and color this and then we're gonna flip it over and we're gonna do the other side again so that we'll have all of this done this window should be completed and so that we can show it to you in the front of our studio it'll be in one of the windows over by the light box So that's the consistency of my glazing compound. The recipe is on our website. If you'll use that glazing compound recipe, that glazing recipe, you're gonna see here in just a minute how easy it cleans up and how quick that we can flip this over and start the other side. So here we go. Now I like to, when I'm puttying, I like to work in a circular motion because then I'm not taking putty out of anything. And I also like to keep just going back over it and not leaving a big mess behind. You see, we started out with a big mess and then we go back and we eliminate the big mess. And we wanna make sure that we do even the outside of the window because that's just as important as the inside. Okay, so we've got our coat of glazing on and now as you can see, I've taken I've taken just a quarter inch dowel and I've put a, not a sharp point on it, but I have sharpened it. And now what we do is we go around the outside, the edge, and we're gonna cut all this away. And this doesn't take that long to do. So what this does is just 
trims everything up and eliminates putty from around the edges that we don't need. Now, once we get this finished, we're gonna take what's called an acid brush. And this is my acid brush right here, okay? So first thing I'll do is I'll move the putty that I've scraped away off to the side. And then I'm gonna show you, if we take and take our, our lead and in a circular motion, we're not removing any putty. But we're cleaning the glass. Now when you flip this over, which I'm gonna show you how to do momentarily, as soon as I'm done polishing this side and cleaning this side up. So once we get this done, like I said, I'm taking all of the, this stuff right here I'm just taking it and we're gonna brush it off to the side. And I have a small vacuum cleaner here in the shop, in the studio, that I'll take and I'll clean all this up. And you'll see, now I haven't used any pl plaster of Paris or anything like that on, on this because where my studio is in the front of our showroom next to the gallery, I can't bring those processes into the building. So I glaze these windows, I polish them, I vacuum all the dust off of them, and then I put them in these front, these beautiful front windows that I have here. I put them in there and let the glazing compound, let the sun cook it and dry it out now the windows will become rigid. They'll be easier to clean once we get light behind them. But the other thing is, is we're gonna to get to enjoy these. So we're gonna try and fit in and do get a few words in before Miss Mary starts up again. And so we're gonna, we've gone ahead and we've patinaed all of this. And now we're just gonna do a, just dab it up. Make sure there's nothing really soaking wet. Now remember, you know, once you patina your windows, that's it, it's done. It doesn't get darker, doesn't get lighter, it just stays right there. But what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna be, I'm gonna blend the lead. And the copper foil. And see if I can't get them to be close to the same color. And remember, when you're putting y'all and you're using blue chip glass, don't not finish it. Make sure it's completed before you even decide you're gonna take a nap or go to bed or eat lunch. Make sure you get it completed. One thing you wanna make sure you do is you complete the copper foil and the patina part, because if you leave the patina on overnight, especially on white glass, it's gonna give you a really pretty brown ring around the edge that won't come off. It's gonna etch it almost. And then you wanna make sure that your glass is clean thoroughly before you put it up and make sure you cover it up until it's standing in the window in the light, make sure you cover it up. Well, the patina on the glue chip will do the same thing that it does on the copper foil. If you don't remove and clean it thoroughly, it will leave a residue around the edge. So we've got this side all taken care of. 